I'm Carla. And I'm Keys. And, and we're, we're the, the History, History Twins. Twins. Where history is more than just dates and dead people. Join us each episode as we explore the past through music and story. All right. Who are we talking about today? Well, today, well, so far in our podcast, just mm-hmm. to give a quick little recap. Sure. We talked about Major Don Andre, right? That is Officer, correct. Officer, gentleman, spy. Mm-hmm. And, oh, because the whole story is about... The Benedict Arnold treason and Major John Andre, British Major John Andre, you know, the British spy master. So this time we want to focus on American General Benedict Arnold. And his wife, Peggy Shippen. That's right. 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 Okay. Because, you know, through history, um, you know, as I, as I love to say, I'm from Miami. Mm-hmm. And even in a little place like Miami, well, not that it's that little, um, We're far from the original 13 colonies, but we still heard about Benedict Arnold. And to be called a Benedict Arnold is like one of the highest insults you could ever Mm -hmm. call someone, you know, to be known as a traitor. And um, so it's kind of it's kind of cool to be able to dive into Benedict Arnold's story and find out how it happened and even a little bit why Mm -hmm. it happened. Yeah, and we yeah. can we're going to get into why it happened in more detail in a couple of more episodes. Absolutely, because you know the whole musical is about the story. So that's right. Each one of our episodes is going to go a little deeper into the story, and we're going to share a song, you know, all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So, what can we say about Major? About Benedict Arnold? Benedict Arnold, yeah, General Benedict General Arnold. Benedict Oof, Benedict my Arnold. goodness, yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing is, all of these high-level spies, it's not like just the low-level people. It's the best, and also I think, think that's why the story was so compelling. Compelling. Benedict Arnold was in a pretty high place. He wasn't just some, you know, some just local dude. He mm-hmm. had he was in a position of power. Yes, he was. And I he mean, threw it been, all he'd away. Been, he'd been... Besides being a general, he was also the the military general of Philadelphia. Well, yeah, because you know military he, governor of yes, Philadelphia. Yes, but because he had been a war hero, mm-hmm. like he was one of those, like he started from the bottom. Another one of those started from the bottom. Now we're here kind of stories, where he was known for his bravery. He was one of the those people that were like, okay, we don't want the the British, you know, to take over. You know, so he, he was known for organizing his own troops Absolutely. before, I think, Leading before, from the front, they call it. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Even before, I think, when, when he was just like a local kid, or a local kid, but like he was just a local guy in, in mm-hmm. Connecticut or wherever mm-hmm. he was from. Sure, he's from Connecticut. Um, He started, he, like, he was just organizing things mm-hmm. even back then. But he eventually became part of, like, the Army Army. Right. Continental Army. The Continental Army. Yeah. And he became a war hero. Mm-hmm. Hero. Like, he fought in all of these different battles, mm-hmm. and he didn't get a lot of credit. No, he didn't, especially in the Battle of Saratoga, which mm-hmm. was a really important battle because uh, it was a major victory for the Continental Army, and it, it, it uh, showed the French that, or convinced the French that they should join the cause, and that's, you know, a, a big part of why we won the war. Um, but he did not get credit for that. No, no, he did not. And I, so it, from what I understand, on multiple occasions, Arnold received little or to no recognition for his exploits. Mm-hmm. And he'd gone uh, almost as far as he could go. He was a brigadier general, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. he wanted to rise higher than that to a... Um, I've forgotten what the rank is. <laughs> but he wanted to he wanted to rise higher. <laughs> Major he, general. Ah, okay. Major general. Okay. And you know, we we're saying like at this time, well before the French came in, the colonies, we weren't even America yet, there were all of these kind of ragtag, you know militia, militia and or Minutemen even mm-hmm. who were just resisting the British. Right. And think about the energy that they must have been displaying for the French to to finally decide, you know what? Okay, we believe this that this is a lost cause, right? This, this is a cause. These these colonies in America, well, in whatever they called this back then, mm-hmm. I don't know, whatever those colonies were, right? The, uh, the British territories, world. the New World. They thought, wow, they must be doing something really big. We want to back them up, and one of those are, and one of those battles was that. Saratoga, the Battle of Saratoga, where where Benedict Arnold was 
I guess, did he lead the charge? Or he was definitely yes. one that was out there. Mm-hmm. He was injured. Mm-hmm. Um, wounded. wounded, yes, yes, yeah. yes, he was wounded. He was shot in the leg, and mm-hmm. he'd already been shot in that leg. In that same so leg. It, so um, he was, and it, it crippled him for the rest of his life. Yes. One leg shorter than the other. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So he walked with a limp, and, and, and he and walked with and a cane. So, and didn't he give money? I think he'd also given oh, yeah. money to he, the cause. He, he, you know, paid his troops out of his own pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how much he cared for so that's why it's also so alarming because he really he gave his not just blood sweat tears and money and you know money he put his money where his mouth is it's true and this is all the thanks he got really it's, yeah 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 so even you know trying to rise up to major general uh congress kept snubbing him mm-hmm. and, and other you know his juniors were being uh promoted to the to the position and he wasn't he couldn't yeah. Take it. yeah, it's like you know, getting passed over per, for promotion. People can you know relate to that. Mm-hmm. Like you get passed over and passed over again, and you're like, wait a second, I've done this, I've done this. No respect, no respect. No they respect. just know for everything I've done, and this is how you treat me. So mm-hmm. I kind of when I when I think of Benedict Arnold, I think of, of, about that. So after the French came in, or at least after Battle of Saratoga, he was injured. Uh, Arnold was injured, and he needed to recover right so washington appointed him as the military governor of philadelphia after the british left after the british left and the british had been in philadelphia for a while and apparently like while the officers were there i thought this was very interesting that they had a lot of parties Mm -hmm. and they had a lot of good times there and um well, we'll talk about Peggy Shippen, but Peggy Shippen, his uh, Benedict Arnold's wife, attended a lot of these parties. Yes, she did. Yes, but before we get to that, Arnold was now the governor, the military governor of Philadelphia, and the interesting thing was the the Continental Congress and Pennsylvania Supremes of uh, Executive Council. Mm-hmm. They didn't appreciate. His actions, like they, they just while he was military governor, they did not like Arnold's. I guess they just didn't like him. Mm, you know, yeah, I think. Yeah. And and you want so they came up. Let's see, who was it? Joseph Reed, who was the president of uh, Pennsylvania's Supreme Executive Council. He brought charges, um, multiple charges against Arnold for shady business dealings and abuses of power. Uh. And you know, one of those abuses, so called allegedly or reportedly supposedly because he took carriages everywhere now remember this man is walking with the limp he's suffering from injuries he's got one leg shorter than the other right right and he's still recuperating he's still recuperating and Mm -hmm. he can't take so this man can't take a carriage everywhere he goes Mm -hmm. he's just like Uh, you know riding riding a horse requires both your legs walking requires both your legs yes so yeah a carriage a carriage so he was unable so and as far as I understand, it was only this this uh, Joseph Reed person who had anything negative to say. But mm-hmm. he is, or he was, the the president of Pennsylvania's Supreme Executive Council. So that went a far right, right, a far uh, powerful man. Yeah, he was a powerful man. So they he brought these multiple charges, and eventually. Uh, Arnold was absolved. He was cleared. He was cleared. Mm-hmm. But they turned it over to the army. They're like, okay, well, we want you to, we, we want y'all to handle this. This is your right, dude. Right. You handle it. Mm-hmm. So the army, they also, they also absolved him of, of the charges. Mm-hmm. But the army recommended that Washington give him a reprimand anyway. Even though he'd been cleared. Mm-hmm. 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 See, Washington, you know, we get all these different things we're learning about Washington. Everybody, people are complex, you know, and, and Washington is in his own, uh, you know, he's, he's got his own thing to, he's got his own row to hoe, and he's trying to maintain control, and he wants people to believe that he has things together, and, you know, he's, but he's just a human like everybody else. Mm-hmm. So, the the council told him or the army said hey you have to reprimand uh benedict Benedict arnold Arnold. and so he did Mm. which is really i mean i suppose it's probably like a slap on the wrist right however still still blemish on his record well yes and and not only that arnold benedict arnold 
had up to this point he had seen Washington as his greatest ally like mm-hmm. like like I mean I'm not gonna say he was his bestie but right. it, like someone who he felt like this is my this is my dude like he's got my back this is my ride or die mm-hmm. and for him for for Washington to say well you know I have to reprimand you and and I have to like you know publicly call you out on these actions that probably became like the final straw the final straw the the nail in the coffin mm, mm-hmm. so that was one of those things so like you know see and that's that's the thing i love about history you know we're, we're all human we're all going through these same kind of emotions right now who listening has never had that feeling of being passed over right. or snubbed mm-hmm. and and just feeling like nobody's on my side yeah. why can't you be on my side mm-hmm. <laughs> so I feel, you know so that's just a really interesting part of that story um, so but a more positive side of things mm-hmm. while Arnold was military governor of Philadelphia he met the lovely Peggy Shippen mm-hmm. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> now she was a lot younger than he right she was 18 uh-huh. and he was 36? I don't know. He was older. I think he was twice her age. Yeah, he, he was older. But she was believed to be possibly the most beautiful woman in Philadelphia. Mm. She was maybe also one of the richest. Therefore, uh. I'm sure that also makes you beautiful, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure everybody, all, all the rich women look beautiful. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But aside from that... Um, she was what they call a, a socialite, mm-hmm. meaning she was rich yeah. and she came from a wealthy family mm-hmm. and her family they were loyal to the crown loyalists loyalists exactly mm-hmm. and she uh peggy had been born in like she was she was she had been born in well, i don't know I, I, she was born in the in the colonies right but her family were still loyal to the crown well many people were loyal to the crown yeah you yeah. know we we always think about the revolution as being a bunch of patriots we mm-hmm. all banded together that is not true there were there was uh many 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 loyalists many people who could not foresee uh how uh the colonies would come together and become one country and they didn't want to give up the protection of the crown mm-hmm. or, or any of the their loyalty to to the crown to england yeah it's also kind of like the devil you know in a way, yeah, but some people it wasn't a devil; it was a blessing. They had business with them. That's true. They, you know, they they were it was it was going to uh, be against their interests to to uh, uh, rebel against the crown. Well, that's true, especially if the the crown had given you all kinds of you know you you were benefiting from any kind of favoritism mm-hmm. or any even like rank or rank or money, yeah. all these different things. So, mm-hmm. and and you make a really good point. It's so important to remember that America wasn't America then. Right. Remember, it was, you know, Britain, UK, United Kingdom, mm-hmm. like it was just this huge empire. power empire. And then they allowed <laughs> different people to come to because and and how they even do that? Like they're they're claiming these these parts of of what of North America, and they're right. saying this is ours now. That's we true. won't even talk about Native Americans. But the point is, all of a sudden now, the the the, the powers that be in the British Empire now have have started uh, these thirteen colonies mm-hmm. of land and. They're in charge, and they, no matter how far uh, the UK is, they are still in charge. It's true, and even after the revolution, uh, was when they were the Constitutional Convention met, they were discussing whether or not to be one nation or thirteen smaller nations. Yeah, it was it was a uh, it was a big deal to to put everybody together. Yeah, so when you think about these times, consider that. It wasn't what we think of now. So the idea of being loyal or disloyal or treasonous, what did that really mean at that time? Mm -hmm. You know, it it wasn't what it is now. It's not like, oh, we're selling spies to, we're selling, you know, spies selling secrets to, you know, to another country. It's, it's, we weren't yet even a country. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So um, Peggy Shippen's family they are loyal to the crown. Her father, I believe his name is Edward Chippen, mm-hmm. and 
He's a wealthy man, yeah. and he's got this beautiful daughter. She's the toast of the town. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows who she is. Everyone thinks she's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Um, even uh, Major John Andre, oh, yeah. as I said, before, when, when British had occupied Philadelphia, mm-hmm. um, when the British occupied <laughs> Philadelphia, there were like all these British officers and they were having parties mm-hmm. and they were having all of this, this the luxury life. Now, how people do this during a war is beyond me. Other than, other than again, though, it wasn't necessarily a war, I suppose. Like if you, depending on where you were, because they had... Well, they, they, they controlled the town. Yeah, they controlled it. Right. So, okay. So it was controlled town. So th- what did they do while they were there? They, they were partied. having a party. Mm-hmm. They have these beautiful gorgeous parties and and like costume balls mm-hmm. and and Peggy Shippen was all into it. She was a she was a socialite. She mm-hmm. was a party girl. Mm-hmm. Um in as much as she could be a party girl at 18. Right. Um in that time mm-hmm. and she was she was eligible. She would go to the parties and then after the British left then in comes Arnold and he's yeah. the military governor. Mm-hmm. So he happens to see Peggy Shippen, and he's like, hey. whoa, 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 How whoa, you doing? whoa. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the romantic music. <laughs> so, of course, he falls for her. And, he, and, and so uh, Benedict Arnold begins to court Peggy Shippen. Right. Now, her family, Edward Shippen, and I guess whomever else was around there, they didn't really approve of that match because no, I mean, he was American. they were loyalists. And not only was he a, a rebel, he was a general. Yes. It's really hard to hide that. Yes. You know, you, yes. it's really hard to downplay that. But at the same time, they were walking a fine line because they had to downplay their loyalism a bit, too. Exactly. So it was a really tenuous and interesting situation. Yes. And eventually, Peggy Shippen's father gave the okay. Mm-hmm. For, for them to marry. For them to marry. So they got married. Yeah, yeah. So now something else. Um, uh, let's see. So another part that, that was really interesting about that. A month, only a month mm-hmm. after their wedding. Right. Arnold, using like loyal localist friends. Mm-hmm. He sent a letter to New York City. Local loyalist friends. Local loyalist friends. Yes, yes, yes. He sent a letter to New York City. Mm-hmm. For British General Henry Clinton to offer his potential services to the crown mm-hmm. only a month after they got married. Mm-hmm. Only a month. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Remember, we were saying that, that George Washington had given that like that final slight. Right. And, and Benedict Arnold was like, I am... Done. This is how this is how they treat me. Okay, mm-hmm. fine. So he marries a, a loyalist woman, and a month later he sends a note to General Clinton in New York City, British General, General Clinton. Yeah, because you know there's there's, there's actually an American Clinton, there's American Clinton Clinton, too. yeah there's Clintons just on both sides. To, just to clear things up. Yes, yeah. exactly. There was exactly. a Clinton on both sides. There was a Clinton on both sides. A General Clinton on mm-hmm. both sides. So Benedict Arnold sent this letter through local loyalist friends to General Clinton saying that he was available for services with the crown. Mm -hmm. Like he's like, okay, I'm available. So, um, and then around this time, he was also recovering from those injuries. Still still recovering. And, And so if he had wanted to, he could still lead more more troops in battle. Mm-hmm. He could have. And and that's also very interesting to me too that you know age isn't it's not about age, it's not about uh injury because they needed every good person that they could get. Mm-hmm. So even if you were older or even if you had been injured, if you were able bodied, mm-hmm. you could fight in this war sure. because you were needed. Mm-hmm. But instead at this time because we know now that Arnold had had a change of heart. Right. Instead of seeking an act of command, now that he has recovered, Mm -hmm. he lobbied, Arnold, he lobbied George Washington to place him in charge of 
the Hudson Highland Fortifications and West Point. Right. How you like that? Mm-hmm. So this is so this is like he's married to Peggy Ship and he's already sent his note to to uh, General Clinton, right. British General Clinton. Mm-hmm. And so Arnold lobbied to George Washington. Of course, Washington had no idea at this time Nothing. that Arnold had already contacted the British. Right. And so Arnold wanted, like he asked for that because he had told or he was, his plan was that, uh, Arnold's plan was that he was going to gain control of West Point right. and give them, give them, a, give them an end, you know, so the that, British, and give the British right, an right. end so they would be able to, well, to control Point it. Well, West Point was an incredibly important fort. Yes, absolutely. And, and we'll get into the, more of that in future episodes, but a quick mm-hmm. thumbnail is that uh, basically the Hudson River was the gateway to the northern colonies. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you controlled West Point, you controlled what went up and down that river. Exactly. So it was, uh, it was a really important fortification. If the British took control of it, that would have been the end of the revolution. Exactly. So I think we might have mentioned earlier, or at least I had been thinking, I don't know if I said it, but it doesn't matter. Um, I just get this feeling that Benedict Arnold was tired. Mm. He was tired of all the fighting. He was just like, you know what? I'm I'm tired of this. Let's. I just want this thing to be over because you know this this the slog of a war because mm-hmm. it wasn't exact. It was just a lot of people resisting in battles. Mm-hmm. You know, it does get old after a while. Sure. You know, and now he's married. He's got this beautiful young mm. woman. Yeah. He doesn't want to spend all of his time fighting. He wants mm-hmm. to have you know maybe some family life. He right. wants to enjoy it Mm -hmm. you know so he's like you know what i'm done with this i think i would be better off just working for the brits you know Mm -hmm. i you know i I, i've met some loyalists through my wife and they seem like nice people they seem like they've got a good deal with the crown yeah i think i think i want some of that too yeah kind of an opportunist absolutely absolutely Mm -hmm. so so um on August 3rd, 1780, mm-hmm. Washington gave Arnold command of West Point. So, you know, he got his wish. Right. And now his plot was set into motion. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. So, now another point, which we will definitely be getting into, is that after Peggy married, after Arnold married Peggy, She's also believed to have passed those encrypted notes Ooh. through her network of loyal t- mm-hmm. loyalist friends. Right. And some of those letters went between Benedict Arnold mm-hmm. and John Andre. Uh, because John Andre, mm-hmm. he was the, he was the head of the, you know, the British intelligence, but he was the liaison right. between Clinton, General Clinton and Benedict Arnold. Uh-huh. So he was like, that's also how um, that got involved. Well, and I should back up a little bit. When Peggy, well, when the British had occupied Philadelphia, mm-hmm. she had become friends with Major Andre. Right. Ben- Benedict and Peggy were friends. They knew each other. Right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Major Andre. Um, Major yeah, Andre. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I know. The Andre Arnold. So much to keep Keeps up. happening. Yeah. I know. So... Major John Andre yes. and Peggy Shippen not only knew each other, they had a close friendship. Some yes. people say that they were even courting. Yes, yes. So there is a whole then, thing there. But other people say that they weren't courting, but they were just he just really liked to be in the company of beautiful women, and he was a social butterfly. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he'd be crazy not to have courted her, but, you know, I don't you know. Never know hey. I mean, but we don't know. We don't know much of anything. We don't, exactly. We don't know we much of there. anything. <laughs> we only know what's been written down and, exactly. s- and still survives. Exactly. And everything else is speculation. Pure conjecture. Absolutely. And we love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it turns out that Peggy Shippen knows Major Andre. Mm-hmm. So we learn that Peggy is sending notes to John Andre. To John Andre. So she's she's sending notes from Benedict Arnold. Yes. So this is like so there's just like a little network of friends. Mm-hmm. I can imagine like this letter passing to another friend to another friend. Like I'm seeing hands. I'm seeing hands with like, you know, I don't know, jewelry and and gloves. rings and gloves. You mm-hmm. know, like 
you know, and, and looking very, in my mind, I imagine this is, you know, so very civilized looking mm-hmm. and, and yeah, the gloves and, and the dainty hands mm-hmm. and pass this, send this to someone, send this to someone mm-hmm. and it getting to where it needs to go. Yeah. Just that, yeah. that little connection. This mm-hmm. is before the internet. This is before the before, World Wide Web. Before telephones. It's before <laughs> any yeah. of those things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So... The next song, the one we're going to play today, is Here Comes the General. Right. Yes. And um, I like this song. To me, like it's very fun mm-hmm. because it has a kind of call and response. Yes. And it kind of feels like a spy relaying a message. Mm. So it's like, you know, here comes the general. Here comes the general. Yep. Here comes the general. Here comes the general. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that for me, it's like. What one voice is saying, this is what's happening, and then there's a second voice passing it on, you mm-hmm. know. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, let's let's listen to Here Comes the General. All right, all right, sounds good. Here comes the general. Here comes the general. Here comes the general. Now over on the American side, a decorated war hero turning the tide. From a ragged bunch of rebels to a military machine, Benedict Arnold was making the scene. Benedict Arnold, courageous and tough, being Brigadier General wasn't enough. Tried to rise higher, but they passed him by. He got so ticked off that he thought he changed sides. Benedict Arnold up at West Point. Washington put him in charge of the joint. Whoever held the fort controlled the Hudson River. So he thought he'd sell the plans to the highest bidder. Another name you should know in our story so gripping is the Belle of the Ball, his wife, Peggy Shippen, friend of Major Andre, friend of the Brits, made the introduction between him and Benedict. Pretty Peggy Shippen, just 18, could turn a man's head if you know what I mean. She had wiles and charms, no man could refuse them. She had beauty and brains and knew how to use them. and encrypted letters between them in invisible ink making sure no one's seen them pretty picky shipping no one suspected the information she passed the information collected we're back and we're back that was fun <laughs> yeah, that was fun and we always say that <laughs> You know, one of my favorite parts um, of Here Comes the General, like when we were first writing the song, mm-hmm. we were just like writing different rhymes and just sort of figuring out the lyrics. I enjoyed coming up with, well, with you, we both did, um, coming up with different kind of rhymes for shipping. Shipping, yeah. You know, like in our story, so gripping. You know? Scripting and encrypting. Scripting and script, scripting and encrypting yeah. letters between them. Mm-hmm. You know that that was so that was like just another fun fun song. You know, for me, um, the, the fun part was giving a, a musical motif to each of the characters. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. in the first half, you have that kind of groovy synth do 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 for um, for uh, Benedict Arnold, mm-hmm. and then the harpsichord for yes. for Peggy Shippen, and also the change in beat. Yeah, That's, that was a lot of fun to arrange and put together yeah because like the harpsichord gives it sort of like this little feminine touch or mm-hmm. this kind of classy touch if you will absolutely because like the beginning you know, here comes the general because there's like isn't there sort of like military a military beat. Yeah, yeah yeah so we have this military beat and that is representing general benedict arnold mm-hmm. but then it softens with with the harpsichord yeah. then you're like oh okay peggy shippen has mm-hmm. entered the room and the sneaky little melody yes you know it's hype you, you put your foot in that. That oh, was good. Thank yeah, thank th- that's a compliment, by the way. Putting your foot in something, <laughs> it's like a Southern thing. It's like when someone uh, cooks a really good meal, like in the South, you're like, oh, you put your foot in that. So, you know, I use that to describe a lot of other things that I like. So, so Jim, you put your foot in that. Thank I was, you. Yeah, I really appreciated that. Thank you. And, um, you know, one of my favorite facts about Peggy Shippen mm-hmm. is that 
no one knew that she was involved until the 1930s. The 19, why is that? Because the historians didn't get around to looking at her letters, her mm. correspondence until mm. then. Can you imagine? They're just like, oh, wow. okay, well, you know, let's let's look at her letters, you know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, oh, shoot, there are inv there's invisible ink on these letters this whole time, and we did not know. And they also had a code, didn't they? Yes, 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 yes. Um, let's see, the codes were written in between lines mm -hmm. of seemingly normal Innocuous letters. Innocuous letters, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they were received and made visible, the codes were deciphered using a book called Blackstone's Commentaries on the Laws of England. Oh. Like, how boring wow. a book is that? Yeah, like, nobody's gonna look at that. Never, never. No one, but how did it work? So each word of the message mm -hmm. would be written in three numbers okay. that directed the recipient to a specific page, mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. and the word in the book to use. Oh, the column. Yes, uh, yes, yes. That's crafty. That is crafty. Do you have any idea? I mean, imagine how much time it would take to compose uh, a letter that yeah. way and to decode a letter yeah. that way. That, wow. And and also, it was a book that they both had to have. Well, sure, yeah. And Blackstone's yeah. Commentaries on the Laws of oh, England. That like, is some crafty stuff right how there. How boring can you get? But so they came up with whatever, however they came up with this mm -hmm. code. They used that three number system the three number system mm -hmm. and then they encrypted it in invisible ink putting it wrote it in in, in between. between lines of just a regular innocuous oh the weather is so nice today mm -hmm. oh you should come here you should come visit oh blah 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 but in between this is what's going on yeah. this is where we're gonna meet you know yeah that, that's, that's that is that's pretty crafty that's pretty crafty mm -hmm. so when you think about it you know, you hear the word every now and then. You hear the word spycraft. Yes, and that that's some that spycraft. That fits under right it right there. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, Benedict Arnold mm -hmm. and Peggy Shippen mm -hmm. were quite the dynamic duo. They absolutely were. Just like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. Now that you know. You know. You know. <laughs>